Good evening, this is Dr. Sanjeev and this is BA2 Poetry and Drama class. And in this class, we are going to start the poem Dover Beach composed by Matthew Arnold. As I have already mentioned that Matthew Arnold belongs to the Victorian period. And I have also talked about a bit uh, about the Victorian period. And you have seen that Victorian period has a compromise between science and religion, between optimism and pessimism, between aristocracy and democracy. These were the concepts that were in conflict. These were the ideas and beliefs that were in conflict. And you have also read the poems of Tennyson, especially a very popular poem, Ulysses. That is a dramatic monologue. You have also read Prospice by Robert Browning, though lecture on Robert Browning's personal life is left to be uh, given to you. I will give you. And through these two poems, you have come to see that one poet is trying to make a balance between both confusion, optimism, doubt, and you can say pessimism all these ideas they are coming to a balance begins with negative approach moves with the positive one and makes a balance recognizes that both things are part of life on the other hand you have read prospects by robert browning you see that the poet is very optimistic poet is very uh, sure very enthusiastic related to what he is going to do what he is going to do when he is going to face death. He is well prepared for that. He is prepared for all kinds of uh, problems and he believes that at one point all losses, all ki kinds of you can say pain and sufferings, they are going to turn into arrears, into the rewards. So this is very optimistic and in one poem that is Pippa passes in which Robert Browning says God is in his heaven and all is right with the world. So what Browning believes about the Victorian is he looks at the bright side and God is, a, is in his heaven. So God is there and everything is right with the world. Now let us come to what Matthew Arnold is looking at into Victorian life, Victorian society. Because Matthew Arnold's approach is rather pessimistic. Matthew Arnold is not that person who is looking at this note of happiness. He is not looking at that. He is looking at the note of sadness and melancholy. What is the meaning of sadness and melancholy? Dukh, nirasha, pessimism. So this is what Matthew Arnold is trying to do. So I am going to share the screen so that you can a view the text of the poem at the same time i have also tried to work uh, for the word meaning and some thoughts which are related to this poem so i hope that you would be able to see the screen are you able to see that screen yes, sir. okay so i will talk about dramatic monologue at the end of the poem because you have not read this poem though it is not completely a dramatic monologue and at the same time it is much like a lyric it is much like a lyric and it is not a complete dramatic monologue but it gives you some clues that there is one speaker who is speaking and there is someone who is listening so as you have seen that in dramatic monologues there is one speaker who speaks and there are listeners and through the language through the statement that narrator makes the presence of the audience or the listener is felt so we shall discuss this point later so what is Dover beach Dover is a place that is in england that is the you can say part of kent uh, state or county whatever you call it and this beach of Dover, Dover is a seaside uh, you can say city that is situated on the sea the English Channel and this Dover place is very popular and it is just known that Matthew Arnold spent his uh, you can say honeymoon in 1851 in Dover Beach though this poem was written something around 1867 
60, 16 years after the marriage of Matthew Arnold. But this reminds Matthew Arnold his own honeymoon. So remember that the Dover Beach place is related to the place where Matthew Arnold spent his honeymoon. Okay. Let us come to the poem. This poem has two things to note. First that it is trying to give you a very pictorial, very visual image. You would be able to make a picture of the whole scene that is described through the words. Abhi aap log padhenge to aapke dimaag mein ek tam picture banna shuru ho jahe. At the same time, the auditory effect has been given rather more importance. Jo sunne ka effect hai, jo voice hai, jo sound hai, whether it is the sound of the narrator, jo bolne wala person hai, or the sound of the sea that is produced. Jo samudra ke kinare, kyunki ye sea shore hai, beach kya hai? समुद्र का किनारा होता है और जो सी की वेव्स हैं उसकी जो साउंड है दैट इज आल्सो ऑफ मच इंपॉर्टेंस सो दैट आई हैव रिटन इमेजरी विजुअल एंड ऑडिटरी एंड व्हेन इट इज अबाउट लैंडस्केप वी टेक इट एज विजुअल लैंडस्केप मतलब जो एरिया होता है जो जगह होती है जो आप क्लियरली देख सकते हैं दैट इज अराउजिंग विजुअल इमेज सो व्हाट इज द लैंडस्केप द लैंडस्केप इज द बीच ऑफ डोवर and what is the auditory effect or soundscape the waves which are creating noise which are creating sound so landscape and soundscape both things are of great importance okay now let's begin the poem and we shall discuss other things as they come into the poem the sea is calm tonight it means that the poet is talking about the very night when he is writing the poem maybe the narrator of the poem is poet himself or poet is trying to choose another another third person who can speak uh, for the poet himself okay so let's not confuse let's say narrator the sea is calm tonight the narrator is looking at the sea and he finds that the sea is calm calm means shant hai the tide is full, the moon lies fair. Though this calm sea is not that calm, it has tide. Iske under tide ban chuka hai. It means that it is having a strength to be, uh, to create tide, to create ebb and flow, to disturb the calm and serenity of the sea. And you see, when the sea is calm and the moon is shining in the sky, what does it mean? The reflection of moon on the water surface of the sea is quite visible. Isilio Karaki, the moon lies fair, the moon was sundar dikhai de raha hai. It means that the moon is getting clear reflection upon the water. Pani ki upar sata jo samudra shant hai, bale us ki under tide chupa hua hai, bara hua hai. But now because the waves are still, waves are calm. So it means that the reflection of moon is very visible upon the streets. What is the street? Street is a place. Street is a place that disconnects two land bodies. Like you say, Strait of Gibraltar. When I mentioned in O to the West Wind. Okay. So Strait is. A water body, a channel that disconnects two land bodies. And the Strait of Dover disconnects French Cliff and the English place, Kent. Though there are different uh, corners uh, into the island that is called United Kingdom and the continent that is Europe. So you see English Channel, you will find that there are different streets, different places, water bodies. Though the channel is the same. Okay. So the state means the water body that lies between France and between and England. So the on the French coast the light gleams and is gone. And see on the one side on the Dover side on the English side the narrator is standing narrator of the poem is standing and on the other side of the street yes state that is going to divide two land places land bodies so on the one side there is 
England or this whole British Isle. On the other side, there is European continent where, where France city is situated. So he is saying that on the other side, there is French coast. And from the French coast, what is happening? The light that is glimmering, जो उनके buildings में, उनके घरों में, उनके जो palaces में light है, वो चमक रही है. And that, then it is gone. Means they have fluctuation in light, or they may be unstable light, or maybe because it is night, so people are going to sleep. Anything can be possible. The cliffs of his England stand, and what is the cliff? Cliff is a very steep, you can say, land that is coming down straight to the uh, surface of the sea. आप लोग देखे होंगे पहाड़ जो नदी के किनारे या समुद्र किनारे ऊंचा सा मिट्टी का पहाड़ होता है जो भी स्टोन बॉडी होती है लैंड मास होता है और अचानक जो है बिल्कुल स्ट्रेट जो है जमीन पे नीचे उसके बाद खत्म हो जाती है मिट्टी और स्ट्रेट नीचे उतरा हुआ होता है दैट इज कॉल्ड क्लिफ यू कैन सी द इमेजेस ऑन गूगल इमेजेस सो द क्लिफ ऑफ इंग्लिश इंग्लैंड स्टैंड सो on the english side the cliff is standing so the rocks which are suddenly coming down to the level of the uh, sea they are standing glimmering and was out in the tranquil bay and the cliff of england they are also glimmering into where in the tranquil bay ye jo khadi hai that is also tranquil means shant hai calm is the synonym of tranquil so on the english side the cliff the the mountain roughly you can say the land mass that is standing on the seashore it is glimmering now let me know why it is glimmering because it is moonlight and the reflection of this land body is also getting created on the surface of the water wo jo water ke surface hai उस पर जो है लैंड की भी जो है क्या कहते हैं रिफ्लेक्शन दिखाई दे रही सो वॉट इज द विजुअल इमेज क्रिएटेड ऑन द इंग्लिश चैनल ऑन द स्ट्रेट ऑफ यू कैन से दिस केंट यूल फाइन दैट ऑन द इंग्लिश साइड द क्लिफ इज गेटिंग रिफ्लेक्शन इन टू द वॉटर ऑफ द सी बिकॉज द सी इज काम एंड देर इज मून लाइट सो शैडो और रिफ्लेक्शन इज गेटिंग क्रिएटेड एंड ऑन द फ्रेंच कोर्स दूसरे साइड से भी the lights that are coming that, that are there into the palaces into the buildings into the houses they are also glimmering into the water just let me give you clear uh, example in hindi jo aap nadiyon ke kinare ya samudra ke kinare khade hote hain aur samudra ke jo bade bade mahal bane hote hain bade bade hotel bane hote hain other side se aap dekhenge to pani mein unka reflection banta rehta hai unki image banti hai you stand on the other side of the water body and see on the next side you can see the opposite side you will find that the palaces in the night they have light and their light is getting reflected into the water wo pani mein jo unki image jhalakti hai so on the both sides uh, this uh, the you can see the places the palaces the land masses which are there they are getting reflected into water so this is very clear pictorial image come to the window sweet is the night air now from here you see the idea is breaking now in these five lines the poet or the narrator has described the scene in a very picturesque way aapke dimag mein ekdam clear picture ban gayi hogi ki ek zameen ek pani ka kinar matlab water body samudra hai ek side cliffs hai unchi unchi jo hai chattane hai ek side buildings hai unchi unchi aur dono ke reflections jo hai pani mein aa raha hai and this is very calm sea samudra bahut shant hai tranquil hai that is why there is no disturbance and now the poet is using an imperative sentence come to the window aisa laga hai wo kisi ko bula raha hai it means that there is someone who is listening to what the narrator is saying jo aadmi kuch keh raha hai usko koi sun bhi raha hai isliye kara ki aao idhar come to the window come to the window means khidki ke paas aao स्वीट इज द नाइट एयर एंड रिसीव द ब्रीज जो हवा बह रही है शाम के टाइम रात के टाइम दैट इज सो स्वीट दैट इज सो काम एंड दैट इज सो प्लेजेंट ओनली फ्रॉम द लॉन्ग लाइन ऑफ स्प्रे 
where the sea meets the moon blanched land and where is this wind coming from ye hawa kahan se aa rahi hai it is coming from the line of spray the line of spray is roughly the line where the water is meeting to the land ek line ban jati hai jab aap samudra ko dekhenge समुद्र का पानी जमीन को टच कर रहा है सो द लाइन दैट सेपरेट वॉटर एंड लैंड यू कैन ड्रॉ द लाइन आप लोग देख सकते हैं कि पानी वो भले ही दैट इज नॉट स्ट्रेट और जिग्जैक्ट लाइन बट यू कैन सी दैट देर इज अ लाइन ओके सो द लाइन ऑफ स्प्रे हेयर मीन्स द लाइन वेयर सी इज मीटिंग द लैंड and what is the moment दिस इज नाइट टाइम दैट इज वाई इज सींग वेयर द सी मीट द मून ब्लेंस land now what is the meaning of moon blends the land it is again very pictorial image and the previous line is also giving you clear picture aapko picture ke roop mein samajh pani land se mil raha hai uske beech mein ek line ban rahi hai crease ban rahi hai okay and this land is moon blended it means that the moonlight is white roughly white uh, of white color and when this moonlight is falling on the surface of the land it is coloring this land into moonlight so moon blench moon ke light mein ranga hua okay so where is this wind this very sweet air is coming from from the sea side where the land is very much like white and colored into the light of the moon and the water is having glimmers jisme battiyan chamak rahi hain of what of the palaces and the buildings from the french side of the cliff from the english side again he is using another imperative word listen suno it means again the presence of the listener is felt jaise koi kisi se kahe suno jara you hear the greeting roar of pebbles with the waves draw back and fling at their return and now the scene is changing till this line i mean till the previous one the scene is very beautiful the moment is very calm the water of the sea is very calm and tranquil but now what he is saying that the sound that is coming through the through the air is giving a grating roar what is the grating roar the unpleasant sound aise koi dahar raha hai aur kisi ke aane ki awaaz jo hai na itni karkash hai that is not giving uh, pleasure that is not giving calmness that is not pleasing to the eye uh, to, to the ear so wahi keh raha hai poet to the person who is listening it is his beloved okay so he is saying that listen to the greeting roar of pebbles why the pebbles are creating very unpleasant sound because inside the water of the sea there are small stones which are moving with the water and the force of the water jaise aap dekhenge nadiyon mein jab pani behta hai to uske niche niche patthar ke chote chote tukde bhi dekh they also flow with the water and in that flow they are Uh, creating friction with other uh, stones jaise chote chote kai stones jab aapas mein jo hai ladte hue aate hain to unke beech ek sound nikalti hai and that is the sound which he is mentioning here so see now comes the auditory effect or the sound escape with the landscape and he is talking about the roars of these pebbles these small stones which the waves draw back and fling wo kaise aate hain these stones small stone they are drawn back by the waves of the sea jab samudra ki lehrein aati hain they bring small stones from inside the sea and they fling fling matlab phenk deti hain with force because when the waves of the sea they approach the uh, sea shore they don't come smoothly and pleasantly they come with force and inside that wave the stones and all other objects which are there inside the sea they are thrown outside they are thrown on the beach now at 
they return up the high strand and what happens when these waves are returning these small pebbles they are left outside wo bahar chhod jate hain aur ye waves kya karte hain lot jati hain and what is seen on the high strand on the land place of the ocean sea or lake or river the place that is outside the water is called strand that is up because if it is not up the water will be logging there ऊंचे प्लेस हैं इसलिए पानी वहां पे चढ़ने के बाद फिर उतर जाता है बिगिन एंड सीज एंड देन अगेन बिगिन एंड दिस इज नॉट हैपनिंग वन टाइम द वेव्स आर ब्रिंगिंग पेबल्स फ्रॉम इट्स साइड एंड दीज पेबल्स आर क्रिएटिंग अनप्लीजेंट साउंड टू लिसन दट इज नॉट हैपनिंग वंस इट इज हैपनिंग टाइम एंड अगेन इज सेइंग बिगिन सीज एंड देन अगेन बिगिन it means that waves come they fling out these pebbles from the uh, way from the sea on the land they again go back and leave uh, some pebbles on the land then again they come and throw they throw out again some other stones then they come back then they come and bring some other stones and this is happening again and again and with this happening this frequency of the occurrence of uh the arrival of these waves what happens with tremendous cadence slow and bring the eternal notes of sadness in and what is happening this water is coming not simply you can see with force but it has also a shaking effect pani kaapta hua aata hai because water is not calm water is not smooth when it is coming in the form of wave and though it is coming slow but it has a rhythm and what is that rhythm what is that sound what is that music that is bringing sadness and that is not simple sadness that eternal note of sadness in this wave of the sea is having some sad message for humanity okay now you have seen the surface meaning of this first stanza let us understand what poet really wants to say or perhaps he is trying to say with the help of the waves with the help of the uh, pebbles and with the help of coming and retreating of these waves these waves symbolize in a very metaphorical way symbolize faith so he will come to this point in the last stanza the sea of faith so this sea is in the beginning it is an ordinary sea which has all those phenomenon or phenomena that happens there so the waves the stones the sea beach the breeze the air and the pebbles which are there inside they are coming and going back all these things are there but if we say this whole sea is symbolizing religion or faith what are the pebbles pebbles are the people because they are covered inside the sea with reason if pebbles are sto uh, humans and the sea is religion all those pebbles which are inside the sea they are having faith into religion okay and now what is happening these people are losing faith because of the advancement of science as i mentioned when i was introducing the as and that is why what is happening people those who are losing their faith they are being thrown out of the sea of faith or sea of religion and that is why it is saying that there are pebbles which are creating greeting roar and now they are thrown and they are uh, fling out of the sea and this is not happening once time and again it is happening frequently it is happening so this is what the poet is trying to see through the uh, this first stanza and because people are losing faith into religion and people are now not able to go back as these pebbles don't have strength to go back with the wave okay so it is creating a sad note that people have lost faith eternally So this is why he is saying the eternal note of sadness in it is there in the waves. 
now we come to the next stanza uh, talking to talking about the stanza pattern of the poem this is not very organized stanza first stanza is having a good number of lines then the second stanza is a smaller one and then the third stanza is again a smaller one and the fourth is again the longer one so there is no organic structure uh, sorry pattern of a stanza not the structure but organic pattern of stanza so it is not written in any stanza form roughly it is irregular stanza form now what he is saying he is saying that sophocles long ago heard it on the asian and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery who is sophocles sophocles is a greek dramatist he is very popular for writing dramas especially tragedies usne bahut dukhad plays likhe hue hain and those tragedies in which fate and will of god plays very important role jisme bhagwan ne aisi duniya structure kar di hai ki man cannot do anything this man is the victim of whatever god has designed for a human so sophocles was one dramatis who in 497 to 406 bc it is his time period he also heard this same sadness he is saying that he is uh, sophocles long ago heard it on asian asian sea is on the coast of uh, greece greece ke paas jo hai ek asian sea hai greece ke kinare you see in the to the world map and what did he see or what did he hear he also heard the same note of sadness from the sea this is dover beach and the english channel which is creating the sound of sadness or this is bringing note of sadness and 2000 years 2500 years ago roughly one uh, you can say dramatis sophocles he also heard the same when sophocles was sitting near the aegean sea and what did he see in the turbid ebb and flow of the water of the aegean sea turbid means matmaila jo ganda hai full of mud and dirt jo ganda pani hai uh, of sea that is coming and that is uh, that is meeting the sea shore it also brought the masses of sadness into the mind or consciousness of sophocles so he is saying that sophocles also heard the same note into this ebb and flow of the aegean sea and what did he find the human misery aadmi ke andar jo hai dukh hai that is what was heard by sophocles we find also in the sound a thought hearing it this distant northern sea and now poet or the narrator is saying that the same is being heard the same thought into the sound of the sea is being found on this northern sea that is in the north of england you see in the place of kent and dover into the map of england you'll find that it comes into it is into the northern part of english isle okay so now what matthew arnold is trying to Uh, do matthew arnold is trying to compare the same situation that is happening at the time of 1865 66 67 uh, with the same time oh sorry with the time when sophocles was there and there is difference sophocles was humanist at that time there was no industrial revolution there was no such advancement of science so what sophocles found while listening to the sound and rating roar after see it's ab and flow is basically the turbid one he found human misery what kind of human misery the human misery created by the fate and will of god you have uh, read if you have not read you read uh, the play edipus the rex you will find that there is no one at fault but the tragedy occurs and matthew onder is living in the industrial society so the misery created during the victorian age is by the development of industry the advancement of science so these are the things that poet is trying to say into the second stanza